Good day, Grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in finance and growth. In our last lesson, we learned about simple interest. And in this lesson, we're going to continue by talk and higher purchase. We learned about simple interest and higher purchase. In this lesson, we're going to continue with a lesson on compound interest. So first of all, compound interest is the interest calculated on the principal amount plus the accumulated interest. So in other words, let's say for example, you borrow 10 Rand from your brother and he says that's fine, but he wants to charge you 10% um, compound interest. Let's make it 100 Rand and he wants to charge you 10% compound interest per month. Okay, for every month that you lend it from him. Um, and let's say you take out the loan for six months. So that's six months. Okay. So the way this works is initially you owe him 100 Rand, right? But after the first month, you owe him 100 Rand plus 10% of 100 Rand, which is 110 Rand. Okay, that's pretty easy. Plus the next, I mean, not plus, it's, um, anyways. So that's the second month, okay? Now, now, third month, you owe him that 110 Rand plus 10% on that. So 10% of 110 Rand is, is, is 11 Rand. So then you'll owe him 121 Rand. Okay, so we started off with 100 Rand. That was, then this is the end of the first month. This is the end of the second month. The third month, we need to add another 10%. That is going to be adding 12 Rand 10, so that becomes 10 cents. And if we add 12 Rand, that becomes 133 Rand and 10 cents. That's the end of the third month. Now, if we have a fourth month, we had to add 10% of that again. We are now adding 13 Rand 31 to that. So we're adding 13 Rand 31, which is going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, and 146 Rand. That's the end of the fourth month. In the fifth month, we've taken 146 Rand and 41 cents, and we are adding 10%. So we're adding 14 Rand uh, 64. So that ends up being, um, where was that? That's a 2, 6 and 4 is a 10, carry 1, 6 and 4 is a 10, it's 11, carry 1, that's 4, 5, 6, 161 Rand. And then we've got one more month to go, so we add another 10%. Let's just check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes. If we add another 10%, that becomes, we're adding now 16 Rand. Uh, and 10 cents, which becomes 2, 1, comma, 7, 7, 1. So that is how much money you will owe him at the end of six months. Whereas if he had charged you 10% simple interest, you would have owed him 160 Rand at the end of those six months. So although this seems like a small amount, it's an extra 17 Rand 12 cents you have to pay on 100 Rand over six months. So imagine what your compound interest would be if you were suddenly having to pay compound interest on a large, much bigger amount of money um, over a much longer period of time. Okay, so compound interest is calculated on the principal amount and the cumulative interest. The interest is added in and then they count on interest. So the idea would be that if you're learning money from somebody, you try and go for simple interest. But if you are getting money out, then you want... Um, <laughs> um, hi to Clipton Youth Program. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> um, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. Um, so anyway, or to see that you yeah. Um, okay, so where was I? So what you would see is that the simple interest is obviously a much easier for if you want to learn money from someone, then you obviously 
want it to be simple interest, but if you want to invest money, then you obviously want it to be compound interest. Okay, now let us carry on and let me just erase all this writing. Okay, so now the formula, instead of doing this little adding, adding, adding every time that we'd have to do, you can use the formula. And the formula is A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the N. Now what you need to understand is that that formula is um, given to you. So you don't have to panic about remembering it. It is actually given it to you. So A is the amount. That's the amount we get out at the end of the compound interest, pe interest period. P is the principal. That's the amount that you loan or your investment. Um, I is the interest always written as a decimal. And N is the number of years. Okay, N is the number of years. Um, so now let's us carry on. So it says, let's do an example. It's probably the best way to learn here. Hey? So we've got A is equal to P, I, 1 plus I to the N. So you're going to be given this, okay? You're given this. A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. It says, Carl wants to invest 25,000 Rand into an account that offers a compound interest rate of 7% per annum. How much money will he have for the in the count at the end of the five years. Okay, so you need to realize that you want to write down all the variables. Remember I said to you guys before that you always want to write down all the variables you have just in case you need them, okay? So you've got P, I, N, and A. You don't know what they want. Okay, and initially, obviously at the moment, we're doing compound interest. So we will always know that we're going to be using the compound interest formula. But when you're doing exams and they give you a question, you won't know if it's a simple interest question or compound interest question until you finish reading it. So always write down the variables you have, or the variables available to you, and fill it in and then it'll help you choose the right equation as well. So first of all, he wants to invest 25,000 Rand. So that's your 25,000 Rand there, 25,000 Rand. Into an account that offers a compound interest rate of 7% per annum. Now remember what I said to you, this has to be a decimal. So the only way we can do it is divide that by 100. Because that's what this percentage sign means. This percentage actually means 100. You see, 1, there's the line, and the two zeros, that actually stands for 100. So we go 7 divided by 100 which is 0, 0, 0,7. N for grade 10s is number of years. So therefore that's five years. And A is the amount of money that we're going to get out. This is how much money will we have in account. So that's what we're working out now. So we've got A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. So the principal is 25,000. 1, 2, 3. 1 plus... 0, 0, 7, all to the power of 5. There we go. So now we can put that in our calculator. So we're going to get out the calculator. And we're going to switch it on. And we're going to go 25, 1, 2, 3. Whoops, it's already 25,000. Multiplied by 1 plus 0, 0, 0, 0.07, all to the power of 5. And yes, I know some of you would have immediately gone 1, 0.07. That's fine. That's cool. Not a problem at all. Um, I'm just showing you how you would do it if you'd go straight from this point. And then you equals, and that's 35,063 rand and 79 cents. And remember, we're always running off to the nearest cent. So we always have to look at the third number. And the third decimal is a three. So therefore, it's fine. We can leave it at 79 cents. It's 35,063 rand and 79 cents. So it's 35,063 rand. Oh, I've gone blank. Hang on. Yes, I'm right. And 79 cents. There you go. Okay, not too bad. Hey, not too bad. Right, let's look at another example. It says, Sam borrows money from a bank in order to finance her new business. The bank charges her an interest rate of 12% per annum compounded annually. 
Um, calculate the amount of money she loaned. They want to know how much she loaned from the bank if she pays off the loan in six years with a total payment of 350000 Okay, so, oh, and it was compounded. Okay, but let's write down A, P, I, and N. Okay, it says they borrow money from a bank. The bank charges an interest rate of 12.5%. So that's 12,5% divided by 100, which is 0, 0,125, right? It's compounded annually, which is cool because we're paying it off in six years. So therefore that is a six. It says calculate the amount of money she loaned. So we need to work out the principal if she made a total payment of 350,000. So that is the amount she paid was 350,000. So obviously we're using the compound interest formula, which is A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. Now, some students find it easier to actually um, write down the, work out the subject of the formula first. Um, but most of my students, I find that they prefer putting the numbers in and then solving for what they want. Okay, and so I'm going to do that because most of them find it easier to see what they need when they've just got let one letter left. Okay, so let's do that. So the A is 350, 1, 2, 3, equals P, 1 plus 0, 1, 2, 5, all to the power of 6. Okay, so do you agree that 350, 1, 2, 3 is equal to P, and I'm going to make it easier for us to read this, 1, 1, 2, 5 to the power of 6. Now we want P by itself. Do you agree? So if we want P by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 1, 1, 2, 5 to the power of 6, and this side, 1, 1, 2, 5 to the power of 6. Okay, these cancel, ring, ring. And what are we left with here? We're just left with P. And now we can pop this in our calculators, eh? We can go 350, one, two, three. We check, one, two, three. Divided by 1.125 to the power of six equals, and that becomes, 172,644.56, always look at the third decimal. The third decimal is a four. Don't look at five and think, oh, we've got a five, we can round this up to a five, which means that's gonna round up to a seven. That's not how this works, okay? Please don't think that. I've had huge fights with my students about that. You just look at the third decimal. The third decimal is a four. That's below five, so you leave the six alone. So it's 172,644 and 56 cents, okay? So it's 172,644 and 56 cents. There you go. So that is how much she would have had to have loaned in order that she paid back 350,000 after six years. Okay. Right, let's try another example. This time it says, find the annual compound interest rate that makes 5,000 Rand double in three years. Okay, so we know we're doing compound interest. So we know we're doing A is equal to P, one plus I to the power of N. They've told us it's compound. Okay, so what do we have? We've got the principal is 5,000. What is the annual? I mean, the amount. The amount is obviously 10,000, right? The I is the interest, and that's what we're trying to find out. And N is three. N is three. Hmm, interesting question. Okay, let's pop it into the equation and see what we get. So we've got 10,000 is equal to five, thousand one plus one plus i all to the power of three okay so do you agree that i can first of all get rid of this five thousand we're going to divide both sides by five thousand and divide that by five thousand okay so that's two is equal to bracket one plus i to the power of three 
Okay, now I need to get rid of this power of three. So we're going to do a trick. And the trick is that we're going to cube root both sides. We're going to cube root both sides. Okay, if we cube root this side, the cube goes away and we're just left with one plus i. And then all we have to do is find the cube root of two. So we're going to go, if we can find the button, there it is, shift cube of two equals 1.259. So the nine rounds it up to six, it's 1.26. So that's 1 comma 2 6 then you obviously solving for i so we're going to subtract 1 from both sides so i is going to be 1 comma 2 6 minus 1 therefore i is 0 comma 2 6 therefore the percentage is 26 percent because remember that this is a decimal so to get it back into percentage what do we need to do we need to take your decimal 0.26 and multiplied by 100 which is going to give us 26 percent okay cool hey okay now there's something i wanted to point out to you guys okay sometimes they really mean and they don't give you the 5,000 rand okay they might say find the compound interest rate that makes an investment double in three years okay it just makes the investment double in three years and it's actually quite sneaky because it's actually almost identical to this question because what you do and this is how sneaky it is is you let this dude be x you let the amount that you invested be x then the amount that you got out was what it would obviously be 2x right then do you agree that instead of having 10,000 yeah you're going to have 2x right and then you have x here and then you divide both sides by x and check what happens do you see the x's cancel and this x cancels and then you're left with the same thing okay so they love asking that they're very sneaky they love asking you find the annual compound interest rate that makes an investment triple or double or whatever in so many years all you need to do is let your original investment be x and then your amount out be if they say double it is 2x if they say triple it's obviously 3x and the x is cancel and you end up back with numbers so don't panic too much if they give you something like this where there's no real number okay because they love doing that in exams don't panic right let's try again now we're going to move on to inflation okay so Inflation is the average increase in the price of goods each year. Um, I'm sure you've heard somebody talking about inflation in the past, okay? So, for example, um, people will say, um, it's given as a percentage, but let's, let's say, for example, they'll say, uh, the inflation rate is 7% this year. And what does that mean? That means that things are 7% more expensive to buy than they were last year. Okay, so that means that in order for you to survive, your salary has to be at least 7% higher than it was last year. Do you understand what I'm saying? So inflation is an average increase in the price of goods each year, and it's given as a percentage. It's since it increases from year to year, it is com calculated using the compound interest formula. It makes sense. So if I said to you, what is the inflation rate? And I said 7%. It's 7% from last year, which was worked out on the year before, which was worked on the year before. So obviously it's a compound interest formula. So for example, you've got a loaf of bread, which costs 750. It says, how much will it cost in three years' time if the inflation rate is 9%, 9.6% per annum? So this is so easy. You just use compound interest formula. You go A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the N. And again, you write out your stuff. A, P, I, N, N. These are your variables, right? Your principal in this case is the amount that it currently costs, okay? Which is 7 Rand. 50. The I is the interest rate as a decimal, so it's going to be 0, 0, 0.096, and the number of years is 3. So it's identical to the normal compound interest formula. You just have to understand that your P in this case is what you're currently paying 
for your item, okay? Or the amount of money that you're receiving as a salary or whatever. So A is equal to 7 Rand 50 multiplied by 1 plus 0, 0, 0.096 to the power of 3. Okay, so then all we need to do is get out our calculators and we go, well, let's clear this. And we go 7 Rand 50 multiplied by 1.096 bracket to the power of 3 equals, and that becomes 9 Rand 87, because that's a 3. So it's 9 Rand 87. So in three years' time, the same loaf of bread will be count, count will be costing you nine rand eighty three. Okay, so why is this important? This is important because if you are trying to work out how much money you're in a need when you retire one day, then what they do is they actually work out how much you how much the inflation rate is. So for example, it's no you saying, okay, fine, well, I'm going to put money aside and in 20 years time, I'm going to have saved, um, I don't know, um, 10,000 Rand. Because 10,000 Rand in 20 years time is not going to be enough for you to live on for a year. Okay, it won't even probably be enough for you to live on in a month. Um, assuming the current inflation rate okay so you need to work out the inflation rate or they that's what they use they use calculations based on the inflation rate the current inflation rate to work out how much money you're going to need in the future okay let's look at another example i just need to do something quickly hold on a second Sorry. Sorry guys, um, <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing. I've actually got a horrible head cold. So instead of me blowing my nose in the mic, um, I actually quickly switched the mic off so you wouldn't hear that. Sorry. Okay, so my apologies. Okay, it says a box of tissues costs 18 Rand today. How much did it cost two years ago if the average inflation rate was 9%? Okay, so this time we're still using the the, the, the compound formula, right? A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. But this time, we want to know how much it cost years ago, okay? So this time we're working out the per, and this is how much it cost today. Why? Because of the two years ago. Because of the two years ago, okay? So we say A, P, I and N, the N is 2, the interest rate is 0, 0, 0.09, the P is what we want to find. We want to know how much it cost two years ago if it is now costing 18 Rand. Okay, so now we substitute into here again. So the way I know that in the last example I said to you, hang on a minute, in the last example I said to you that now was P, okay, but the reason being is that we were working out inflation into the future. So therefore, this is the amount that was getting out, okay, so that was the future. In the future, the amount is how much you're getting out and the P is what you're currently paying, right? Whereas in the next example, oh, just a second, in the next example, you will see, yeah, it says how much did it cost two years ago? So we want to know how much it cost two years ago. That means we now know the amount that we, that's the future value for this, okay? This is 18 Rand is what we're now paying, and P is what we paid before. So you can almost think of P as before and A as after, okay? I know it's P, not B, but you know what I mean. So, okay, so now we've got the 18 Rand is equal to P, 1 plus 0,09, all divided by 2, I mean all to the power of 2. So therefore 18 is equal to P 1,09 squared. We're going to divide both sides by 1,09 squared. Uh, 1,09 squared. And then cancel. And then we go P is equal to. And then let's find out what this is. 
it's going to be 18 divided by 1.09 squared equals, that doesn't help, 15.15. So two years ago, I paid 15 rand and 15 cents for the same tissue box. Okay. Right. I hope you understand that. Right. Now, as you've seen before, we've had simple interest and compound interest with respect to finance. We've just shown you how we can use compound interest with respect to um, inflation. Now we can use exactly the same equations for population growth. So population growth is very important as it gives an idea of how much resources the country is going to need in the future. So I don't know if you've heard as well, but um, a lot of people these days are stressing about how overpopulated the earth is. They say that um, the earth, we as humans are producing so too many children, we're producing too many children, making too many children. So um, not everybody, obviously, <laughs> but on the whole. Um, and the reason, the problem is that at the moment, the current rate of the population is bigger than the rate of the food growth, which means that if we don't improve and increase the amount of food that we are producing, we are going to have people that are starving. In fact, we already have people starving, but that's more to do with distribution of food than the fact that we're not producing enough food. Okay, so we need to obviously work on that, okay? So, Obviously, each person born has the ability to start another family, so therefore we use the compound interest formula. So, for example, I have the ability to produce a child, my children have the ability to produce more children, etc., etc. So, therefore, we have to obviously add on every time, so therefore it's the compound interest formula. So, the compound interest formula again is A is equal to P 1 plus I to the N. And again, the best way to learn how to use this is to do an example. So it says the current population of Cape Town is 3,740,323. The average rate of population growth in South Africa is 2,1% per annum. What will be the population of Cape Town in five years? Obviously, this isn't ridiculous. I mean, it isn't perfectly accurate because the average rate of population of the whole of South Africa isn't that of um, Cape Town. But let's just use these numbers as an example. So again, A, P, I, and N. And grade 10s, I know at this point in time, you only have like two equations. So you might think she's being ridiculous ridiculous making us write out these variables, but by the time you get to matric, you have future value equations, you have present value, you've got simple interest, effective interest, um, and compound interest, and then depreciation as well. So please, I'm being, I'm asking nicely, learn to write out these equations because, I mean, the variables so that you can choose your appropriate equations because it's really going to help you in the future, okay? Okay, so now, the current population is 3,740,323. They want to know what it will be in five years. So this is what they want. They want the amount in five years, five years. The interest rate is 2.1% per annum. So it's 2,1 divided by 100, which is 0, 0, 0, 0,021, okay? And the principle is what we started with, which is 3,740 and 323. Right, so we're just going to substitute into here. So we've got A is equal to P. Oh, why am I writing it out again? Okay, never mind. 1 plus I to the power of N. 374323. Oh, on that note, when you start your sum, please don't start it with the second line. In other words, write down the formula that you're using. Okay, there's a very good reason for it. It's so that your teacher can see what you're doing. Um, okay, you need to understand at the moment you're in a class with maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 other kids maximum, possibly, maybe a bit more. Um, but chances are your teacher knows you and knows the work that you're doing, okay? So when you write a formula down and you start with the second line, your teacher will go, okay, fine, they obviously know what they're doing, and then follow on from there. When you get to matric and you get to the finals, 
Um, you write excellent exams and the people who mark these papers have no idea who you are. In fact, you don't even have a name on your paper, you have a number. So if you don't help the person marking your paper to understand and read your work carefully, then you're actually going to be losing out on possible marks, okay? So what I teach my kids from grade 10 upwards is that you need to lay your work out so it's easy for your teachers to read, okay? You need to make it easy for them to give you marks. So write down the formula that you're using so they can go, oh yes, the person, they know it's a compound interest, yay, let's move on, okay? So please write it down. Right, let's do the calculation. So we've got three, seven, four, four, zero. Oh, sorry, zero. Three, two, three. Multiplied by one plus naught point naught two one to the power of five equals and it's okay four million hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and one point seven eight obviously you can't have a point seven eight of a person so we're gonna round that up okay so it is four million one hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and two so it's four million one hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and two people in five years time which is a lot of people Right, okay, let's do another example. It says, according to the latest census, the population of South Africa is 57 million. Okay, it is predicted after seven years, the population will grow to 63 million. What growth rate are they expecting? So what are they asking for? They're asking for the interest. So again, we know A, P, I, and N. We currently are sitting at 57 million, 57 million. After seven years, they are looking at it getting to 63 million. And they want to know what is the interest rate. So therefore A is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, so they want the interest rate. We're going to solve by first dividing everything in, okay? So we're going to go 63123123 is equal to 57123123 1 plus i to the power of 7. So again, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 57 million. Right, cancel, 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 cancel. Let's just cancel all of that. So we've got 63 over 57, um, which I'm going to use. Okay, let's just leave it at 63 over 57. 63 over 57 is equal to 1 plus i to the 7. So do you agree we can find the seventh root of this and the seventh root of that? Let's do that. So we're going to find the seventh root. So we need this button here. So we're going to go shift. Okay, no, let's clear that. Shift. Um, hmm. Wait a minute. Shift. There we go. Seven. And then we're going to go sideways, and then we're going to use a fraction button for a change, and we're going to go 63 over 57, and we're going to enter equals, and that's 1.014, 1.014, so I'm going to write it all out, 1.014 equals 1 plus i, Therefore, I is going to be 1, 0, 1, 4 minus, I, minus 1, shall I say, which is 0, 0, 1, 4 
is equal to i. And they want to know what is the actual growth rate. So what do we need to do? We have to put in percentage. So we need to times that by 100. And we do it up here. It's 0, 0,014 multiplied by 100, which is going to be what? It's going to be 1,4%. So that's not a huge growth rate, okay? Not too bad at all. Okay, let's move on. So let's talk about foreign exchange rates. We again can use our um, financial equations to help us. But firstly, we need to talk about currencies. And if you look over here, we've got our rands, we've got some euros, we've got some dollars, we've got some pounds. And different countries obviously have different currencies. I know that the most of Europe have got the euro, but they, otherwise they've got different currencies. Because of the exchange and different economies, the same thing can cost very different prices in different countries. So, for example, if you buy a loaf of bread here, it might cost, I don't know, 12 rand. Whereas if you buy it in London, it might cost you 80p. Okay. Or it might not. It might cost you £1.60. It depends on a whole bunch of different things. So exchange rates vary depending on how well each of the countries are doing. So I don't know if you're aware, but at the moment, our exchange rate is not doing so badly against the dollar or the pound. Actually, no, it's taken a bit of a knock recently. But anyway, the point is that it depends on what's happening in the country. If the country is very financially very solid and very strong, like London or America or Britain, should I say, in America, then obviously they've got a very strong currency. Um, and countries that are struggling a little bit financially, they have a weak extra, a, a weak currency. Okay, so for example. Anna Hitta wants to travel with her family to Portugal. Okay, she has been given 15,000 rand spending money. And it says, how many euros can she buy if the exchange rate is currently one euro is 14 rand 14 cents? Okay, that isn't quite accurate, but that's good enough for this experiment. I mean, for this question. So we're given 15,000 rand. Anna Hitta is given 15,000 rand nice okay she now needs to convert it into euros if we ignore the fact that the banks charge you um, a sum in other words you won't lose anything we can just do a straight exchange from 15,000 rand to euros okay but let's think about this one euro is going to cost you 14 rand 14 right two euros is going to cost you 28 rand 28 cents so do you agree that what I could do is I could take my 15,000, I could divide it by 14, 14, and I would find out how many euros that I would be able to spend or Anahita will be able to spend. So let's do that. Let's take our 15,000 rand, our 15, 1, 2, 3, and divide it by 14.14. 14. No, no, that's not going to work at all, is it? 14.14. And that is going to give you 1,062 euros. So she has got 1,062 euros to spend on her holiday. Not too bad, hey? Talia wants to buy an iPad, which costs $256 in New York. It says, how many rands will she have to convert to dollars if the current exchange rand is 11 rand 8 cents to the US dollar. Okay, so let's think about this. She needs $256. Okay, we know that $1 is equal to 11 rand and 8 cents. So do you agree that $2 is going to equal what? $2 is going to be 22 rand 16. Okay, but do you see what I'm doing? I'm multiplying. $3 is going to be what? It's going to be 8 threes are 24, and that's 33. So do you see that I'm multiplying the number of dollars by the exchange rate of 11 rand 8 cents? So to find out how much she's going to pay for this iPad, she's going to take 256 dollars in rand shall I say and multiplied by 11,08 and that is the number of rand she's going to need to pay out. 
So that is 256 multiplied by 11.08 equals 2,836 rand and 48 cents. 2,836 rand, 2,836 rand and 48 cents and 48 cents. Okay then, not too bad, hey? Right, so now we've got a whole bunch of exam paper questions, but I'm going to leave those and do them to, on Wednesday's maths lesson. I hope that you now have a better understanding of compound interest and its uses, and also of exchange rates. And like I say, we will do a whole bunch of exam paper type questions on Wednesday. So I hope you can join me. Have a great day.